lot of drummers out there are still kind of intimidated by the whole idea of odd time signatures. And um, I'm here to tell you that it's, it's really not as crazy as you think. It sounds like it is, but it really isn't. The reason why it's so foreign to a lot of drummers, especially here in North America, is because 97, 98% of popular music in North America is arranged in neat little symmetrical boxes of four, right? So we're all used to hearing that downbeat, you know, every, uh, every four bars. In other countries, playing in five, playing in seven, playing in 13, you know, it's just, it's normal. It just happens all the time. Like, their popular music on that end, you got seven-year-olds able to play in 13 without them even knowing that they're playing in 13. So it's just a matter of training your brain, right? Your brain is a muscle, just like everything else. Muscle memory kicks in. Playing odd time is just like riding a bike, to be honest with you. Um, it's a little difficult at first, but after doing it for a certain amount of time, it's really easy. Like it, really, it doesn't really require that much thought. Playing seven, eight, nine, eight, you know, 13, whatever, eventually you will feel as comfortable as, as playing in four. So I just wanted to give sort of, um, it's not really so much an introductory lesson because it's, it's, the, the exercises are kind of challenging. But if you're an intermediate drummer, you've been wanting to get into this whole thing, I'm going to show you a couple things about playing odd times, some exercises that you can do um, to just kind of ease you more in a little deeper into the whole uh, odd time thing. Now in this particular lesson, I'm just going to focus on 5-8 and 7-8. I'm not really going to touch 9 yet because you're hardly ever going to play 9 in a, in a regular situation. And I also know there's, you know, 5-4 and a 7-4 and 9-4, and but I don't really put those in the same category as the other uh, odd time signatures. The common denominator is 4. So as long as you're still dealing with quarter notes, you can still dance to it. So it, it, there's nothing too tricky about uh, playing anything where the denominator is 4. The cycle is just in a different spot. So not too tricky. But 5-8 and 7-8, um, you're more likely to run into those. Um, I can count on one hand with a couple of missing fingers the amount of times I've actually had to play an odd time signature on a gig. So, but it's good to practice because the, the residual sort of effects from practicing odd time and eventually being able to fill and phrase and solo in odd time. Um, there's a lot of benefits to being able to do that, that you can transfer over to your, your normal playing when you're playing in straight four. Your understanding of the time just gives you a lot more options, stuff you can play around with on top of, uh, on top of the four. So the whole thing with odd time is just being able to feel the... Um, Feel the downbeats, feel in the new downbeat where it is. If you know where the one is and you can feel that pulse, then it's easy to jump over it and play around it and all that other kind of stuff. The other big thing is, is being able to play the subdivisions inside of those um, signatures. And that's what this exercise is all about. We're going to deal with eighths and sixteenth note subdivisions. So let's get into the lesson. Now, when you're dealing with uh, odd time, if you're just kind of easing yourself into it and you're just starting out playing these types of signatures, the biggest thing for me when I first started learning how to play these was knowing how to count it so that it's easier to play. And this is something that I picked up like, really early on, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a concept that, uh, that Dave Weckl came up with, actually. And it's a really kind of comfortable way to count it so that you can play it at the same time. Because you don't want to have all these numbers rolling around in your head while you're playing. It's just distracting. So if you're, if you're playing in seven, for instance, and you're counting 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's hard to eventually play with any kind of feel if you're constantly counting like that. So there's an easier way to count five and seven and nine. If you want to extend this exercise to nine, you can do that. Um, but it's a much cooler and easier way to count it. So if we're dealing one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, the idea is to sort of leave a little space in there, count it so that it's a little more musical in your head, um, less numbers in your head. And a cool way to count it is like this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, and 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 one. All right. The idea is to be able to fit as many actual quarter notes inside there as you can before it flips. So that way, you know, when you're playing, it's kind of easier to settle into any kind of groove when you're doing that. Seven, same thing. One, two, three, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, and one, two. Three and one, two, three and one, two, three and one. All right. So for these exercises, what we're going to do is we're going to play that particular count on the bass drum. That's going to be our pattern. So there's going to be a little bit of coordination happening here once we get into the exercise. But you're going to play eight notes, straight eight notes on the hats. We're going to start with five, and you're going to play that pattern on the bass drum. Um, one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and one, two, and one, like this. Okay, so what we're going to do with these exercises, these are going to be progressive subdivision exercises that we're going to play on the snare. We're going to play that kick pattern on, uh, on the bass drum and straight eight notes on the hi-hat. And with the left hand, we're going to go through each one of the uh, subdivisions. And we're going to start with eight notes. So we have five eight notes that we're going to be playing and um, we're going to be playing each one individually. And we're going to go through um, each of the five in steps. And the idea for this, again, is to sort of get you used to hearing that subdivision, feeling that subdivision, because all of this knowledge, when you later on, when you go to start um, playing grooves and fills and all that kind of stuff, it's just an awareness thing. You're just going to know where they are and you're going to know how to play them. So this is what the first exercise looks like. Start out slow. Um, I'm starting at, about, I think it's like 60 beats per minute I'm starting at here. And <clears throat> um, just make sure you just kind of settle into it and play it. Like try to, try to play it as if you're playing music. Um, don't really make it sound too mechanical. Like throw some ghost notes in there and whatever. But just look at the first example exercise and you'll know exactly what's going on here and you can hop on your kit and try it.
All right, so that was the first part of it. Those were eighth notes. Now we're gonna play all of the 16th notes in between those, all right? And um, this is gonna prove to be a little bit difficult, so you might wanna slow your click down if you want. But again, the benefit to doing this is huge. Being able to hear those subdivisions, being able to play them, later on, once you start easing into playing fills and playing solos and grooves, because you can actually use some of these as grooves too, once you work them out, um, it's gonna be great, great little exercise for you to do, all right? So, uh, we'll start with the five again. We're gonna skip the one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna, we're gonna move it over by a 16th note and play that next 16th right after the, um, those eighth note subdivisions. And that sounds like this. So there you go, man. It's a simple yet challenging exercise for you to do that will really help you along in, uh, in your odd time playing. The eighth notes and the sixteenth, the sixteenths especially, um, are going to be really good for you to do. So make sure you start out slow. Don't rush into this because you got to give your brain a chance to catch up to, uh, to what it is that you're doing. And then you know, I got you starting out playing those accents on the snare. Eventually move them out. Move them out to your toms. Um, you know, get that left hand moving around. Your right hand, if you want to move it from the hats to the ride, that's another cool thing to do. And then just, you know, do that exercise. Starting slow and then eventually working your speed up. And then the other thing that um, you can do with this, which is really cool, is to just randomize them. So right now we're going in order. The next step to doing this kind of thing would be, you know, if you want to groove on the ride or, or whatever, um, randomize those accents. So play the one and then jump from the one to six and then go back to three and then up to seven and then blah, blah. You know what I mean? Um, you're just getting used to improvising inside that that rectangle of five or seven or whichever one you're doing at the time. So yeah man, it's just a little thing that I came up with for you guys to, to, uh, to work on. It's really challenging, it's kind of fun, especially when you start actually grooving into it and, and you know, playing actual music. And uh, it's just another thing that you can do to help you along with your odd time playing. So good luck. 
Comment below if you dig it. Um, if you have any other questions, other things that you want to learn about playing an odd time, just leave me a comment below and I'll uh, definitely keep it in mind for another lesson. Cool? I haven't really talked much about odd time in a lot of the videos that I got. So if you want to get into it, we can get down. So do your thing, man. Have some fun. And we'll see you in the next lesson.